Drivers face hefty bills as states work to phase out gas and diesel cars. Now, what do we need to know about the push for electric vehicles? And are they moving too fast? And what is going to be the cost? Today, I have Lauren Fix, the car coach, and Rob Underwood, president of Energy Marketers of America. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Morning. Thanks for having us. Thank you for joining us because I'm a little nervous here. So, first of all, what sort of policies are drivers already paying for, and are there any new laws that could add to these costs? That's a great question, though, and thanks for asking. Um, yeah, there's several policies, though. There's penalties for using gasoline and diesel fuel, there's corporate average fuel economy standards. Uh, there's also a potential ban on the internal combustion engine by 2035 in the state of California. So, uh, there's several other states that follow California's lead. That's a pretty big concern because that's going to impact consumer choice. But one of the biggest things I think that uh, people don't really realize, though, is that in order to, to you know, expand you know, EV infrastructure, um, you know, it's going to cost ratepayers, meaning that you're a ratepayer, I'm a ratepayer, everybody gets a utility bill each month. Those rates will likely go up to expand EV infrastructure. So those are some of the concerns there that uh, that people need to know about. And again, consumer choice is a big thing. So if people want to go out and buy an internal combustion engine, they should be able to. But this whole idea of banning it, we believe is short-sighted. Lauren, I got a question for you. If we don't adopt electric vehicles as quickly as some states and environmental groups would like, how do we make sure we don't backslide on our climate goals? Well, I, I think part of it is, besides the policy that Rob talked about, it's really important. And we do all want cleaner vehicles available. So you should be able to choose whatever you want. Uh, the one thing that's important to note is the, the climate goal is obviously to reduce your carbon footprint. So with new fuels that are available with hydrogen, CNG, and e-gas, and a lot of others, you're going to start seeing other options. But for the average consumer to say, well, I'm just going to go buy a new vehicle. Well, that's going to cost about $20,000 more than the comparable vehicle that's gasoline or diesel powered. And the reason for that is, is that technology, those vehicles also wear tires and brakes quicker because of the weight of the vehicle. And then in addition, you still need a charging station in your home. Uh, if you have a garage, if you're outside, you may not have access to one, but in your home, if you're looking between $500 and $2,000 for the unit itself, then in the install between one and $3,000 by a certified electrician. So those costs are borne by you. So we really have to think about, you know, this is great. We all want the environment to be cleaner and, and better, but the impact to the average consumer, can they actually afford it? So you think, well, I don't have a car. So I'm, I'm listening to your, to your show and I'm thinking, I don't need a car, I use mass transit. Well, you're still going to be paying for this because the policies that are in place right now are charging every single consumer, not just at the gas pump, but on electricity. And you're gonna start seeing those rates increase dramatically. So we have to decide what's the cost to go electric. No state has done all of their homework to find out what the full cost of electricity is going to be for that state. And that's a big concern because the only reason you'd backslide is if they didn't do their homework and found that it was literally impossible. So I have a very interesting question. So the first part of the question is, how soon are we looking at all electric cars? How soon in the future? And with climate warming, global warming going on, and we're having these huge thunderstorms and rainstorms and blowing out transformers and power outages, what does that mean to the consumer who has an electric car? Well, it's going to take time for electric vehicles to actually, you know, make a pretty big dent in the current vehicle fleet, though. But Keep in mind, though, you know, we were formerly known as the Petroleum Marketers Association of America. We changed our name to the Energy Marketers of America because we do believe in cleaner, greener liquid fuels, biobutanol, renewable gasoline, renewable diesel fuel. These are cleaner, greener liquid options that will immediately impact uh, our carbon footprint, meaning that it's going to lower significantly. So the more that we can push that out there and work with the, the, with the current, uh, current administration, uh, for more uh, research and development into those kind of initiatives. I think that's going to be a huge deal there for consumers. It's going to lower our carbon footprint. It's going to be great for everybody. You know, Lauren, it's interesting what he just said. You're talking about administration. Okay, so we got three more years of Biden. All of a sudden, the Republicans are back in and they're talking about, eh, there's no such thing as global warming. We're going to go back on this and go back on that. What's the consumer to do? What are we doing out here? Well, right now, about 2% of vehicles being sold are electric cars. Consumers are very concerned about the infrastructure and the grid being able to support it. When you're looking at states like California with the high temperatures, you're talking about weather, all down the whole West Coast, 
Seattle, you know, it was super high temperatures and people don't have air conditioning necessarily there because it doesn't get that hot. So whether it's global warming or global change or whatever you want to call it, the fact is that if you want to buy an electric car, you can, but people are concerned about making that transition because they don't want to be stuck without having transportation. And when there's a brownout or a blackout and there's rolling blackouts all the time in California, and they're telling you don't charge your electric vehicle, that means you can't get where you need to be, especially if it's an emergency. You need to get to a hospital, you need to get to a doctor's appointment, whatever it might be. You may not be able to do that if your vehicle doesn't have a charge. So I mean, I, it's great to, on the surface to say that this is the answer, but there are other answers to reach that goal. Like, it, like Rob has been saying, there's all kinds of renewable fuels that have less of an impact on the environment. And of course we can all do our part, but before you go and buy an electric vehicle, note that the insurance costs are twice as much. And that's something that deters people from doing that, plus the cost of the vehicle. And then oh, their electricity costs are going up. So people are thinking, can I just buy something that will do the job? And there are lots of vehicles out there that people can buy, used or new, that will be better for the, the environment. Rob, last question. How soon in the future are we looking at? One generation, two generations before we see all electric cars? That's a good question. I mean, like, you know, with California trying to ban the, uh, the existence of the internal combustion engine by 2035, you know, but again, it's going to take a long, long time. I mean, fossil fuels will be here for a while, but again, there's cleaner, greener liquid options on the table right now. And I think those will eventually grow and that's going to replace some of the, some of the fossil fuels that you currently see. But uh, again, it's going to, it's going to take a long time to get fully electrified. And it's going to come with a huge cost. So just keep that in mind. The next time though, you get your utility bill down the road, those costs will likely go up to power these EVs. And again, where do we get the power from? You know, you get the lithium, you dig up the ground to get the lithium, the cobalt, that comes with the CO2 footprint. So these EVs are not technically zero emission vehicles. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind, they weigh heavier. They don't pay a dime into the Federal Highway Trust Fund right now. They're gonna have to start paying their fair share to maintain our roads and bridges. Uh, so right. again, just something to keep in mind. And the batteries are not recyclable. That's important to note. So True. when you buy these True. things and you think you're making a good move, the impact of the seven minerals that are rare earth minerals, those are big issues. Yep. Lauren Fix, Rob Underwood, thank you so much for joining us on Morning Blend. So not my generation, but probably my grandchildren will be looking at all electric cars. Thank you again.